How you doing? I'm doing, my friend. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second hour of the Sean Stewart Show, and I will also put this on YouTube. So after this show, I can put this on YouTube. But uh, join me on the line right now. He is uh, Bellator uh, heavyweight, as he will face Cheek Congo in Bellator 161 on September 16th. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Mr. Tony Johnson, to the program. Welcome to you, and how are you doing, my friend? Good, man. Same thing. going good. Life's good. Think of life. Obviously. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, come to the show. And by the way, this is the first time I've ever done a heavyweight before, no matter if it's MMA or boxing. You're the first person I interviewed as far as a heavyweight. Really? I kid you not. Oh, it's an honor then. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an honor then. I, pre I appreciate that. Exactly. And the best part about this is uh, right now, in the uh, when I look at the Bellator right now, Bellator doesn't have a uh, heavyweight champ as of right now. Right. You know, th that, that's, you know, they, uh, they stripped the, the champ that was tied up. He hasn't been active in, in Bellator. That's correct. Uh, you know, he, yeah, he, he had he 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 about two years without fighting, man. I think that's kind of put the whole heavyweight division on him still, you know? Uh, not not freeing up fights for people. So I'm, I'm glad it happened, man. And, uh, you know, time to move forward, time, time to put that strap around my belt, so around, around my waist. Right. Now, um, I was looking at your record. I did watch your uh, last fight. Uh, it was against Rafael Butler by TKO and Punches. By the time the second round, it looks like Rafael Butler was out of gas and pretty much, it pretty much you was going to win that fight. So, after that fight, did you feel like, oh my goodness. And by the way, you're undefeated in Bellator because you did first fight in Bellator 46 and then you fought Bellator 136 and then Bellator 148. So, are you, how focused are you getting to the uh, Bellator uh, heavyweight champ? Man, I, I'm, I'm so focused. You know, I'm right there. This is where I want to be. Everybody wants to be in the career. You know, right there. I got, I got, I got, I got a job to take care of. Uh, September 16th, I take care of Chet Congo, beat him. Then uh, most likely, probably me, me and Matt and Chiron for the title. And I'm going to slap the shit out of him. I, <laughs> I bet you guys, I bet you guys don't. Because I want, I think... I may want to interview him one time. I think I want to interview him, but I don't know because you know some people have like specific days of because sometimes they have training. And then you also did win uh, King of the Couch uh, Heavyweight Championship, so it's not like you're a stranger of championships because you did win King of the Couch Heavyweight Championships on uh, March 26, six years ago. Yes, I did. Uh, I did uh, actually won that against Lopez. Uh, the funny thing was they kind of gave me a title shot like off rip, so you knew you know what that means. So I came in there to lose. Yeah, that, that, that's how I was young in my career. Just being stupid, silly. Uh, I had to lose fifty pounds in twenty days, which yeah. I didn't, didn't up, <laughs> end up end up losing that, you know. And then I had to fight Tony Lopez by five rounds. That's tough. Tony Lopez is something that come, man. Dude never stop, never freaking stop, man. And I had nothing but respect for that guy. But uh, you know, it was my time. Just took the belt and uh, went on a big better thing. Exactly, and then the next, and then the next fight, you lost to Daniel Cormier, who is currently the UFC light heavyweight champ. So it depends who's going to fight between maybe Preen Jim Jones and uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson. So, what was the first? How was it like when you first uh, fight uh, Daniel Cormier before he came into the UFC? Well, I'm just fighting a guy named Nick Gass, from from Aquazilla, and uh, he ended up backing another fight. Right. Um. Wait, did you say he backed the fight? I got an Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, you can continue. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? You still here? Oh, okay. I was like, what the heck? I thought I was all uh, talking to myself. Okay, now, uh, what were you saying? Because you, because I couldn't hear you. He backed out back the fight. Daniel Cormier, you know, he, he took the game of taking the fight. And, uh, you know, that fight right there, my, you know, I had you. Uh, you know, he just my trainer had me run the stairs just the week of the fight. Like, who does that? I told my my legs were hurting. You know, he, just, I, you know, me being young, I didn't, I didn't really understand, I realize or understand that this is my career. I'm kind of the boss. So if I see my legs, I want to work out. That I'm not gonna work out. You know, it's not not me a pussy. It's just me, you know, listening to my body. I didn't, and uh, you know, when, as I take Daniel down, I almost took. I, I, I Daniel took him down when we, when we ran to the cage. The cage had no gear. He ended up getting on top of me. My legs were worn out, and he, he ended up putting the choke in. And, uh, you know, um, that, that kind of led to bigger and better things because through that, we connected again, and he got me on the AK, got me on the Lincoln Entertainment, and my new manager company. So, he's taking his time for it. 
All right. And um, as I'm looking to your opponent, uh, for those of you who are listening, uh, Tony Johnson's on the Sean Stewart Show, School for Interview. And in just in case you guys missed, I'll put it on the YouTube and, you know, Audio Boom, iTunes, so on and so on. Um, as I look into your opponent, uh, Cheek Congo, uh, in his last uh, five fights, he is 4-1. Uh, the last time he fought was Bellator 150. Uh, that is Vincent Kiros by split distance. So, what do you know about your opponent when you uh, when you two guys face uh, in Bellator 161 as the uh, main event? Uh, well, I know that he's a, he's a really good he's a really good opponent. But he, uh, he, you know, he's a he's a kickboxer. Uh, but you know, I've, I've seen him fight a lot. I was a fan of his uh, when I was younger. And I know he gets. We're, we're, we're going to take that to, to our advantage, honestly. And uh, you know, he thinks we're just going to take him down, but we're really going to mix it up tonight. You know, um, I train everything. I train. I train my ass off, and you know, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready for bigger, better things. You know, and check is in my way. And by the way, uh, if I look, since you say he was a kickboxer, he was 21. He was 21 and two in kickboxing. Right now, uh, for the MMA record, he's like 24 and 10. He's 24 and 10. Is there any yeah. other person you also of? Uh, is there also a person other heavyweight you all also looking for who may get the uh, Bellator heavyweight? Because since this is so wide open now. I think he may be okay. Wait a sec. For those of you who are listening, so he may so he may hear like an in and out type of situation. So we apologize for that. Okay, here we go. Uh, Tony, can you hear us? I think there's a situation. Okay, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. It is uh, 19 minutes past the hour on the shots to a show. So sorry if you cannot hear it. So uh, let me try it again. Let me try it again. All right, let me try again, cause, cause I couldn't hear him. So well, I apologize. It wasn't from my end; it was from his end. So we apologize, but this will be all edited, though. So no worries about that. Uh, all right, there we go. Cause it seemed like I couldn't hear you, and they're like, yeah, I might call you again. So, um, as I was saying again, like, is there another person who you are also uh, looking for in the Bellator heavyweight? Cause, like I said, the Bellator heavyweight division roster is like really, really wide open. Yeah, uh, I was saying they they signed that man. Yeah, yeah, two shitty fights. You know, he uh, try to watch the language too, okay. just in case. Just try to watch the language. Language, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, just grab your fights. Uh, he, uh, you know, he 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 looked he looked crappy in both fights, but um, they have a number one, and you know, I I don't, I don't think he's he's worked for number one honestly, and uh, uh, I don't think he is number one. I think I'm number one, or at least near check, you know. But we we put this together in the game. I fought Vol I fought Rafael Butler. He fought he fought Vitaly. He fought uh, Volkov. You know, and he he had some skill in the game, and for Matt Mitchell coming to our organization and uh, and. And just grab his fights. And I was getting knocked out, you know, the, the first fight he had in Bellator and become number one. That don't make sense to me. So, he had him. Now, Okay, hold on. It's okay. Okay, now. Now, do you believe like this? Do you believe like if you uh, and Cheek Conco uh, fight, whoever win that fight could be up for the uh, Bellator heavyweight who are in, in between you two guys? No, absolutely. We're, we're, we're both no more contenders. You know, we're, we're uh, I mean, I made your own check and myself. Uh, so it's, it's, if we were winning the first one, he's gonna go for the title, right? And then when I look at Chick Conco, he also won uh, against Michael Philipsch, Lavar Johnson, Matt Murate, on Alexander Volkov, and uh, Pat Berry. So I think like tomorrow, I think this should decide who should be up for the uh, Bellator heavyweight. Because like I said, it's all up for grabs. It's really up for grabs. Absolutely, it is. And uh, like I said, Matt Mitchell's number one should be number one. And, you know, we're, we're gonna reconcile that. Right now, if you didn't, if you didn't, uh, if you didn't make a career in the MMA, what would you be doing right now? Uh, I'm playing football, I'm going back to you know, no NFL, something like that. But uh, you know, I kind of got out of playing football and I started my MMA career. Okay, and how did you get involved in uh, MMA? If my, if I may ask. Uh, I, I played. Like, I played football. I played. I played a rare football pro. Uh, that was to get picked up by the Bengals. But I, like I said, I found love football. I want to do something different. I want to get back to my wrestling roots, and uh, it was the next closest thing getting paid for wrestling. So uh, I decided to do MMA. That's very. That is. Very, hey, that's a very. That's a very. Uh, that's a very interesting story. 
And then uh, five years ago, you did sign with uh, Bellator, and then you came back with Bellator. Well, how did you uh, came back to uh, Bellator? Well, I came back to Bellator because everything had changed, and uh, new new management, and everything like I had picked up before. Bajon was the was the guy, and you know we didn't have a good relationship, and uh, I went over to One FC. Uh, did my thing over there for Tim Sylvia for Chris Lopez, and then uh, we signed. To come back, we had two options: either Bellator or the UFC. We decided Bellator because the UFC had uh, just signed Reebok, and we didn't know how that was going to pan out with sponsorship. So, you know, I didn't want to take a gamble. You know, time is money, and uh, I just went with Bellator, and you know, Bellator off. You know, the contract was a lot better with Bellator. So, uh, like I said, I signed with guys, and it's been nothing but sunshine and rainbows since then, honestly. Right, because a lot of people, like, here in the United States, unless you're an MMA fan, a lot of people don't know about one championship because that's probably, like, the closest competition to UFC in terms of, like, the country. And then you also uh, play, like, uh, you also fight for an independent company, like, on November the uh, 22nd, when you face against Robert uh, Neal at V3. How do you like when you fought at an independent promotion than, like, a major promotion? Well, it, it, was, it was cool, man. It was kind of cool to come back. You know, and, uh, you know, you got to come back. You kind of got to, sometimes you got to take a step back to go forward. And that's what I did. Like, after I found, after I got my release for 1FC, or when I was on those guys, I came back and they, this company asked me that I want to fight in Nashville. And I said, yes. You know, and, uh, you know, it, why not fight at home? It's a smaller show. I didn't really care. It's just, you know, I, I want to get, get a fight in. And I ended up fighting Robert Neal, beating him in the mid 30 seconds. And, uh, then uh, Bellator came knocking, and, and uh, actually Bellator and the UFC came knocking, and we just decided to go Bellator. Okay, okay. Now, what, is, now what, like, what is the difference between, because I know you fought in the Philippines at one championship, what's the difference between those people in Southeast Asia than the fans here in North America or anywhere you've been to? <laughs> Honestly, the Asian fans are just a lot more respectful. Uh, you know, I guess when it comes to quote-unquote foreign fights, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they, you, you don't hear a lot of booing and things like that, but you know, they're they're just happy to have you know uh, organization over there and some fights over there because you know the UFC is not really in Asia. The UFC is not really in Asia. Right. So, uh, sorry, my kids cry. Oh, it's so, okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going my room. So yeah, like I said, the UFC is not you know really in Asia like that. So it's, they're happy to to get some. Uh, Getting some fights out there, honestly. So, like I said, man, uh, it was fun, man. Just experience, just um, experience a third world country. You, you definitely respect 